Life-changing money was made in the stock market this week. If you weren't paying attention, you better start now. I'm Gav Blacksburg from Wool Financial. I'm here with Evan from Stock Market News. If you haven't already, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel because we're going to be getting into the good stuff right now. Let's walk through how the stock market performed this past week. We have a heat map to start you out with, show you everything, all these vibrant colors. What stands out to you off the bat, Evan? Yeah, you hit it right there, vibrant colors, which means a lot of big moves, both up and down, mostly up, a lot of big green squares, but there is a, a lot of red and a lot of really deep red showing uh, some stocks did move lower this week and move lower largely, but these uh, large cap names led by Tesla up 33% on the week, which is crazy, uh, had a very big green week. Yeah, it was an awesome week if you were a bull, especially if you were in some big tech calls. Some sectors didn't do so great, like healthcare and some healthcare plans and medical devices. But for the most part, plenty of green sprinkled around. We could take a look at how the largest stocks performed in line with what we just discussed there. A couple of them standing out, really the ones that lean into AI and tech and clean energy. This was a big week for all that stuff. Anything else sticking out to you from here? AI is the new buzzword of 2023, it feels like. But yeah. Uh, Tesla up 33%, as I said, NVIDIA had a really strong weekend. Uh, my largest holding Apple up uh, almost 6% on the week heading into earnings next week. So, so yeah, uh, a lot of good stuff. I think we're good to move on though. For sure. And then Lucid. your large cap stocks. Yeah, <laughs> Lucid came out with a story on Friday that there was potential acquisition. Uh, it doesn't seem so concrete to me, but it definitely set the stock on fire. I saw our friend Vegas call out Lucid, $10 calls at 17 cents. They went from 17 cents to $10 a contract on Friday. So there were some crazy moves in the market. And then backing it up, which was Tesla, which was running all week, Shop. Surprised to see that up here. I didn't think Shop was going to be number three on this list, but it is. And then Rivian kind of tailing there. Anything else standing out to you from here? Yeah, we have a story on Shopify that we'll touch on a, a little bit later as to why, but just a lot of names that probably a lot of people watching this video do own are, are on this list. We got those EV names, the names like NVIDIA on here as well, Cloudflare, just a lot of popular names, Airbnb as well. So uh, I'm sure some people had a good week. Yeah, RIP the shorts. Okay, the worst performing large cap stocks. Not a ton on here that I'm super familiar with this week, which is nice to see. I do know Sherman Williams and... Enphase, sad to see Enphase continuing its downward spiral you know, and wasn't able to, what'd you say? Nextera is a quite large, uh, quite of a large company that you know. IBM on here as well. 3M also. Never, announced some job I've cuts. never traded or invested in this. So you, you have heard of IBM though. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. I, I, IBM. I'm not sure. IBM. About IBM. IBM, IBM yes. IB. Yeah. Yeah. Course, not IBM. We covered live not earnings. IBM. All right. Yes, we did. All right. All right. Let's cover, speaking of those live earnings that we talked about this past week. What stood out to you from the first real wave of major earnings? Yeah, we, we did have a couple earnings going before. We had banks and we had Netflix and a lot of stuff like that. But mega cap tech, this Microsoft is the real first one going. They reported EPS of $2.32, beating expectations of $2.30, and then a revenue of $52.75 billion, missing expectations of $52.93 billion. Now, my biggest takeaway from the conference call was them saying that next quarter they expect Azure, their uh, cloud growth to decelerate by four to five percent from the mid 30s. So that kind of implies it'll be in the low 30s growth rate. Now, Azure is probably the most important part uh, of Microsoft that's going to drive stuff, at least drive the stock, at least right now. And, and that was my biggest takeaway from that. But one or two quotes I thought were pretty interesting from that conference call was Satya Nadella saying that the next platform wave he expects will be AI, which is a a very large topic that has been going on. They obviously invested into open AI, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then uh, one other th thing that I thought was pretty funny was that their, their conference call actually had some technical difficulties at the end. And basically they were, they were about 55, 56 out of, out of 60 minutes of the way in and just went to a blue screen and they quickly got some like type up, like it's like 1999 saying they're experiencing technical difficulties. Thank you for the patience. But I thought that one was definitely fascinating. And then uh, another large earnings that I know pretty much everyone will care about on here is Tesla. They came in with a beat on EPS, missed expectations on revenue. But, ooh, there's actually a mistake there on that tweet. I believe they did. Let me double check this live on the video. Yeah, that was. That should say beat expectations. So it was a beat uh, on EPS and a beat on revenue. 
a couple headlines from the conference call that I thought were pretty interesting. Elon Musk started out by basically addressing the quote unquote demand issue that has been going on after they announced price cuts. Elon said in January, they had the strongest orders year to date ever in its history, and they are currently seeing orders almost at twice the rate of production. Another thing that was very focused on was their forward guidance for uh, how many cars they expect to produce this year. They gave guidance for 1.8 million. Wall Street wanted 1.9 million. But Elon did say on the conference call that they can get to 2 million, um, but they just got it a little bit lower to uh, give them some breathing room if anything does happen around the world. Last thing I want to leave you with on this conference call, uh, when I was watching, this was what was said when Tesla stock moved higher during the conference call. It was that they expect their automotive gross margin to stay above at least 20% and average selling prices to stay over $47,000. Now, those numbers were the reason, like they said, 20% and 47K, that was numbers given to them in a question. So I wouldn't take it as like 20 is the bar given by Tesla, but they did say they expect to hold over that, which uh, got rid of some concerns, apparently, I guess, because the Tesla stock did shoot higher after that. So that's a, a lot of my piece. I know I, I came in on a lot there on the earnings, but, but yeah, God, was there anything else you noticed? No, I think you covered everything from earnings for this past week that we wanted to touch on. I think we should go ahead and jump right into the major news stories of the week, if that works for you. 100%. All right. So yeah, the, in addition, there were some airlines and stuff like that. So you could take a look at that. Um, this whole newsletter, if you really want to read it in depth, you could just go through. It's the Bullish Rippers newsletter written from the at Stock Market News account on Twitter. So scrolling through to some of the major headlines for the week, we can start out with Monday. You already touched on this story with OpenAI and Satya Nadella talking about it in the call. Uh, what really stood out to you from Monday? Yeah, that story was massive, getting a lot of traction. We, we said this once or twice, but it, it it's crazy to me how, how much of a topic this came. I'm not going to touch on it because there's one more time we will. AI, AI, AI is just everywhere yep. right now. That's what everyone is talking about. Um, but moving on past that, I don't want to get too caught up in the keywords. They tend to lead you astray in, in the long term, uh, what I, I will say, but we'll see how this one pans out. Uh, banks are gearing up for their biggest round of job cuts since the global financial crisis. That's according to the Financial Times. I mean, starting to see a couple couple stories here and there where like Bank of America is slowing down hiring and BNY Mellon, I think they announced layoffs as well. So uh, I, I'm keeping an eye on this story. And I thought the Elliott management taking a multi-billion dollar stake into Salesforce was pretty fascinating as well. Wolf, were there any stories from Monday that really stood out to you? I think we're starting to see some of these executives take pay cuts is interesting. Now, obviously, they're still getting paid hefty sums, but they're feeling some of the backlash after they saw Apple rather than lay off people just say 50 million by not paying it to Tim Cook, right? And so maybe we'll see that kind of happening throughout the industry because up until now, it's honestly been pretty unheard of. All, all that happens is pay raises for executives. They haven't taken pay cuts in a while. All right, let's roll right into Tuesday. We had that Tesla story kicking us off, planning to invest at $3.6 billion to build in their first high volume Tesla Semi factory, which is exciting. See how far along Tesla Semi has come and as well as that new cell factory in Nevada. More bank stuff as well. Anything else standing out to you from Tuesday? Yeah, so a lot of craziness happened when the market opened on Tuesday and a lot of New York Stock Exchange listed stocks just were halted. Uh, so that led to some craziness. There was a technical issue. I know a lot of people were going crazy. There were some trades that, that happened and, and might be invalidated. So Definitely something I'm going to have to watch going forward, but led to a, a crazy open on Tuesday. Yep. More than 200. And I also stocks. think, yeah. And then I also thought this Hindenburg research story, they put out a short report on uh, Gautam Adani, uh, India's richest man, saying that he is running the, the largest corporate, corporate fraud in history. And I, I know a lot of his stocks are down like 20% over the course of the week or something like that. So that was definitely a fascinating story. Was there anything you thought there? Uh, any insights on that one, Will? Yeah, like you mentioned, he's lost about 25% of his net worth, I believe, since the story came out. Hindenburg uh, publicly has disclosed a large short position as well into Gautamadani's companies. So something to keep in mind, uh, it's still, I think, kind of up for debate, but they seem to put out a pretty comprehensive report making several dark accusations against him, encourage people to go ahead and read it if they haven't had the chance yet. You can check that out through this link as well. I think that's pretty much everything, though, 
before Tuesday for me, there was that DOJ case, but still waiting for some development on the antitrust piece that they're talking about. I think that was around a purchase that they had made uh, from Google. Rolling into the only other, yeah. The only other thing on that day for me is the 3M story at the end, which you can actually see there. The only thing I want to point out is, is I'm watching these layoffs as they kind of bleed outside of tech companies. Uh, I'm definitely watching those a little bit more right now when it's a non-tech company. So there's 3M here. Dow Chemicals did it as well going forward, uh, I believe, on Thursday. That's definitely something I'm focusing on. But moving on into Wednesday, the one story that I want to touch on here, you talked about it a little bit earlier, Wolf. You didn't expect to see Shopify up that much. And this is the story that I believe pushed us higher to that point. The fact that they're raising the monthly price of their basic Shopify and advanced plans by 33% starting April 23rd. Stock uh, did like that this week. Yeah, Shopify is a sticky product. They're not expecting to lose too much business by raising those prices. They also recently have been building a partnership with Mr. Beast, which has been working out pretty well for them. They sponsored a couple of his videos and he publicly tweeted about them this week. So that's definitely helping the cause there with driving new business into everything that they're doing. Also, we saw Facebook and Instagram say they're ending that suspension of Trump. He has not tweeted yet or put anything out on these platforms. There's a lot of uh, comp competition, obviously, between them and Truth Social. So we're yet to see whether he actually starts using these platforms regularly again. Thursday, that big GDP story. It seems like all the data that came out this week just kind of allowed for us to continue our smooth sailing. Uh, the GDP story coming in, you know, 2.9% above those estimates. And then we had the other data, which we'll talk about a little bit later in here that came in in line as well, but didn't seem like data was working to slow us down this week. I do agree with that. Um, for a long time, we were in a, in a good news is bad news because then Powell would keep raising rates, but it feels like the market is starting to think that we're towards the tail end of it. Oh. And now good news is good news. So yeah. we'll see how this continues. The start to 2023 has been been its own microcosm, uh, reminding me of 2020. So we'll see how long it lasts. And uh, and yeah, I don't know. We do have uh, FOMC next week, so that might put uh, a big changer into it. Hopefully not. I like to see my portfolio go up, but I do want to buy more. Uh, looking on for some of the other big stories from this day, this New York City one, they're planning to require Uber and Lyft to go 100% electric by 2030. I thought that one is pretty fascinating. And there's a lot of companies announcing layoffs and doing this and doing that. But Chipotle is one on the complete other side of it. They're looking to hire 15,000 new employees for burrito season. And Wolf, if you didn't know when burrito season is, it's from March to May, generally their busiest time of the year. Appreciate the education. You're there. welcome. Yes. And then the last story on here that's, that definitely has to be looked at. I know a lot of people love watching Nancy Pelosi's trades, but if you followed her on this one, you would have, had lo ha would have lost some money. She bought 100 Roblox calls a year ago let them expire worthless for a total loss of $303,000. Absolutely. And then the last story standing out to me from Thursday was the BuzzFeed one. They're going to use OpenAI, which is a free artificial intelligence platform to enhance their quizzes and personnel and personalize some of their content for their audiences. Uh, this is bullish for the company as they can now essentially fire their staff. And uh, I think this is this, this is stupidest thing ever, the fact that the stock ripped. The fact that they are using a free product, you hit it there, that's available to everyone. I'm going to start BuzzFeed and just do the same thing. We're using the same place. What's their What's their competitive advantage? That one, that to me this week really got me in this mood of this market is crazy. Uh, we're in a 2020 environment. That was the story that pushed me over. There's one over other one that's coming up here. But, um, but yeah, moving over to Friday, Kathy Woods Arc Innovation ETF is now on pace for its best month ever. I'm not sure... Uh, a lot of people expected uh, us to be saying that again. Yeah, Forever. right in right line with Tesla. Yeah, Tesla increased by 33% this week. It's best weekly performance since May 2013. Those are definitely linked 100%. It's, it's not her largest holding in that ETF, but it's, I think it's second or third at this point. And then the uh, other, yeah. yeah. The other major news story from the day with that PC, everybody was waiting on it, coming in in line, you know, slightly, slightly above, but pretty much in line right here. And that was also helpful for continuing that rally that we really saw on Friday where the market just went bonkers. 100%. Last story I want to touch on here that I think it's pretty good for me is the story near the end, the Lucid one. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but unconfirmed rumors that the Saudi Public Investment Fund is considering buying the remaining stake of the company sent it absolutely rocketing 
it was up like a hundred percent. I might have pulled back a little bit to uh, just up fifty yeah, percent. Yeah. But this and that BuzzFeed story really kind of jumping in and, and really honing in on on what type of market we are in now. But yeah, I, I think that's pretty good for me. Was there anything else that you thought interesting this week, Wolf? Exciting week. Great to see stocks up several percent. Everybody's hoping that this is it. We broke through that major trend line on SPY. Can we see the continuation that we all want to see? Well, make sure that you tune in for the next video we're putting up because we're going to cover everything for the week ahead. It's a major earnings week. It's a week that's going to have a lot of data coming out. So make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you can go ahead and see that next video. Make sure you're prepared because if we have another week like this, you're going to want to have all the knowledge and all the data that you can to arm yourself with so you can take advantage of moves like this. Is there anything else you want to add on, Evan? It, next week might be the busiest week of the year. Everything you just said, and we have Jerome Powell on Wednesday coming in, raising rates and doing a press conference. So we're about to put out a video going through and helping you get ready for that. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you like, leave a comment down below with anything else you want to see, any comments you have on the video or anything you want to throw in there. We appreciate you and uh, we'll catch you on tomorrow's video. Sounds good.